the whirlwind that hit the sea entered the coast of Chola country and made its rapid journey. As if the path of the stone, the forest mountain is dry, everywhere the whirlwind went, there were many terrible vandalisms to be seen. From Kadakare to Kaveri Pumpatinam, the works of Lord Vayu were well visible along the shores of the Chola country. Many trees were uprooted and branches were broken. The roofs of the houses had been lifted by the whirlwind and scattered far and wide. The huts were small walls. Floods were everywhere in the Kadakare area. It seemed as if the sea had raged and penetrated the earth. But the stretch of white sand between land and sea belied that theory. Only in places where there was buried mud in that white sand area, there was now more water. If a man or an animal lands in such a place now, it is a samadhi alive. Even elephants will now be swallowed by the mud pits and belched. Two days after the whirlwind hit, hundreds of crores of reapers and their entourage arrived. Pulakam followed. But this time it was Ila Irani Nandini Devi who travelled sitting on that palanquin. There is no need to take Madurn Daka Devar privately now. And if you sometimes take the younger queen with you, will that Palaka vehicle be useful for taking Madurn Daka when the need arises? Nandini enthusiastically agreed to what Palyavatarayar had said. Is it normal for the older woman who was immersed in lust to be interested in taking that Bhuvane Zundari with her? They had reached Nagapatanam before the whirlwind. There the officer first performed his official duties. Nagipatanam was then one of the major ports of Tamil Nadu. Many many objects from foreign countries were coming in huge wooden crates and landing at the port. Thousands of small boats loaded the goods and brought them ashore. Substitutes were brought from the shore and added to the woodsheds. For all these there were many customs officers who imposed and collected. Wasn't it the right and duty of the Chola diplomat to see if they were working properly? After the completion of that work, Pariya Palyavatarayar also visited Sudamani Buddha Viharam which was famous in Nagaipatnam. The Bhikshus welcomed and entertained him properly. The officer inquired whether there was any need for the Buddha Vihara, and whether there were any defects for the Bhikkhus. The Bhikshus said nothing and expressed their gratitude to the Sundara Chola king. A few days ago two pictures from this Viharam had come to Tanjore to see the emperor. On behalf of the Buddhist association, Sundara Chola wished him a speedy recovery. Then they expressed their appreciation for Prince Arulmas Hivarma's charity for Buddhism in Sri Lanka. They also said that the prince's orders to restore the dilapidated Buddhist Viharas are giving immense joy to the Maha Sangam of Buddhist Pikhas in Sri Lanka. O oh Emperor! We hear one more glad tidings. A large part of the Pikshas think that they can give the ancient throne of Sri Lanka to their youngest son and crown him as the king of Sri Lanka. They are talking to themselves like that. What better proof of our prince's pride than this? They said. A strange idea arose in the heart of the great Pulvatareya who was listening to this. After the Pikhas left, he informed the Sundara Chola emperor about it. Will their beloved son not come for so long after knowing their wishes? At this point I have an idea. I will inform you if you order, said Palyavatarayar. After the emperor gave his consent, the commissioner said. Let's send an order to imprison the prince, accusing him of conspiring to usurp the throne of Sri Lanka. Bhutavikramaksari cannot prevent such an order. Besides, if the prince is given the order in person, the prince will surely come. Hearing this, Sundara Chola smiled. A strange idea, but why not give it a try? The desire to see Pani's wealth was burning in the emperor's mind. He felt that his twilight was approaching. So he wanted to reveal his feelings about the kingdom to his intimate beloved Ilongo. When Arulmas Hivarman knew his wish to give the kingdom of Tanjavur to Madhurandhagan, he would agree to it without saying a word. Then through him it would be easy to change the mind of Aditha Karikalan. Thinking thus, the emperor approved the idea of Thanadhikarai. It was on this basis that orders were sent to imprison Arulmas Hivarmar. A strict order was also issued to the head of the tree that no harm should come to the prince. After Irumarakala went to Eland with the aforesaid order, the elder Palavatarayar became a little worried. He realized that if anything happened to the prince, he would suffer a great loss. 
he therefore wanted to go straight to the port of Nagapatanam himself, receive the prince properly and bring him to Tanjavur on his own charge. There were also some other components to this idea. Neither Sembian Mathavi nor Kundave should be allowed to see the prince before he arrives at Tanjore and sees the emperor. Both women have great influence over the prince, haters of spoilers. So they will say something to the prince and spoil his heart. Before the right time comes, i.e. before the death of Sundara Chola, something unexpected happens and things go bad. Besides, ever since the minesweeper had been ambushed from behind in the treasure dungeon, some perverse suspicions had crept into the officer's mind. Could someone be hiding on Treasure Road? So who would it be? Was it the Vinarkula warrior who escaped without being caught by the Tanjore fort guards? Couldn't he then know many more secrets? Could this have something to do with the magician who often visits Nandini as the small gardener says? You have to know that too. The news that the younger Prati Kundave Devi had sent Vandiyadeva to Prince Arulmas Hivarmar with a leaf had also disturbed the Thanadhikari's mind. What message would she have sent through Vandiyathevan? Could the Serpent Lady have reached the news about the idea that she and Sambhavarayar etc. had decided about the Chola throne? Did she write anything about it? In any case, when the prince lands on the shores of Cholanath, it is best to meet him first. As he has ordered to bring Vandiyadeva as a prisoner along with the prince, he must see him first. We need to find out what he knows and how far he knows. After thinking about all this, the great farmer decided to go to Nagipadinam and wait. Nandini Devi had more than her reasons. Nandini was very anxious to see Vandiyathevan again and to know what Leaf Kundave had sent to him. She was also interested to know how far the sorcerer Ravidasan had succeeded. So she said that she is also coming to Nagipadinam. Want sugarcane snacks? The old man immediately agreed. He fantasized about taking a pleasure trip with Nandini on a pleasure boat along the coast. He also wished that there might be a way to get rid of the heat that was burning his soul and body. Palyavetare and Nandini were in Nagipadinam when the whirlwind hit. Nandini was enjoying the strong gusts of wind. She enjoyed watching the waves rise and fall to the height of the coconut trees on the beach. But the dream of Palyavetare that he can go on a joyous pilgrimage on a pleasure boat in the sea was not fulfilled. After the whirlwind had dissipated, the explorer inquired whether there had been any damage to ships and boats at sea. It was known that not much damage was caused as everyone along the coast was aware of the cyclone coming and took precautions. But in the middle of the sea, between Elam and Kadakare, some of the nethers who had gone fishing in the moors said that two ships had floundered and one of them was on fire. This has caused a lot of concern for the pundits. Couldn't those two pieces of wood be the ships that held the prince captive? So what is the fate of the prince? If something happened to the prince, would he suffer a great loss? Arulmas Hivarma who attracted the boundless love of the Chola people. What do people say about him? What kind of peace do you say to the emperor? He had a desire to know certain news. If you go to Kadakare, you may know the details. There may be people out there who have had a good look at the sunken ship. Any survivors from the sunken ship may have washed ashore. Yes, you have to go to Kadakare immediately. When this idea was revealed to Nandini she enthusiastically agreed to it. Nandini said, I have never seen Kadakare before. I have heard that the area is very beautiful. Let's see it on this occasion said Nandini. There are two routes from Nagipatnam to Kadakare. You can board a boat through the canal that runs along the coast. Or go by road. As the entourage of Palyavatare R was large, they went by road. And Nandini doesn't like canal route either. One of the reasons was that Nandini feared that Palyavatare R would start his love story if he went on a boat in the canal. If only on that day, if we go by road, we can come along the beach and inquire about the lumberjacks and the boatmen. There was no new news on the way. Others only said that they had seen a ship burst into flames when a gale struck in mid-ocean. On reaching Kadakare, the keeper of the lighthouse, Tyaga Vidankar, said that he would give up his simple house for the Palyavatare couple. He begged to accept it. 
there is no other loft house to stay in Kadakare. However, Nandini denied it. She said she wanted to camp near the lighthouse. In the same way the tents were pitched. At a little distance, tents were also pitched for the Pavyuvar entourage. As soon as the tents were pitched a large log was found in the sea. It stopped as far along the shore as it could. On seeing it, Palyavetare's excitement was great. Since the ship's sails were frayed it was clear that it must have been caught in a eddy. Who are in it? Maybe a princess? No wonder Pully Cody was not seen. Couldn't it have been caught in a whirlwind? Palyavatarayar sent a boat from there to go to the ship and find out the information. The crew seemed to be waiting for the boat. Immediately two people got off the ship into the boat. One of them was Parthipendra Pallava. Is it not that Prince Aromas Hivarma, who went down to the boat from the tree to save Vandiyathevan, never came back to the ship? Due to this, Parthipendra became extremely worried and staggered. After the wind calmed down and dawned, he sent the ship around and searched. Only one of those who went down with the prince in the boat was caught alive. He told the fate of the boat after he saved Vandiyathevan with princely courage. Due to this, Parthipendra's grief multiplied. The desire to perhaps go to Kadakar and stay away alive was lying on one side and beating. So he decided to go to Kadakar and inquire. That is why he brought the ship there and stopped it. After getting off the boat and starting to go towards the shore, the elder Palyavatare learned that his younger queen had arrived there safely. This irritated him greatly. I also remembered what Aditha Kalar had said about Ila Irani Nandini of Pavur. In a corner of his soul, the desire to see what Mohan Anji, who had stolen the Mahavara's soul and beaten him to madness, would be like that. That desire soon grew and became fattening. There has also been concern that he might not be able to see her. But that worry didn't last. When they got off the boat, they took Parthipendra straight to the tent of Palyavetarayar. At the door of the tent was the reaper standing majestically. Parthipendran thought that it was a big mistake to call that hero who was Ajanupa an old man. He presented himself as a manly lion who was calmer and more emotional than many of the young adults he had seen. While he was thinking like this, a monkey came out from inside the tent. Like lightning appearing from behind the clouds, the golden flower was filled with dazzling light. She stood in front of the reaper like a beautiful flower on a tall and fertile teak tree. Casting her eyes on Parthipendra, who was stunned to see the divine Mahini, she said, Natha. Who is this heroic man? I have never seen him before. She said that. Her parrot tongues intoxicated Parthipendra like liquor drunk from a golden cup.